I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm joined by Amy Huckthausen, uh, Commissioner of America East Conference. Thank you, Amy, for joining us here. Give me a recap of 2018, 2019 for the conference. Yeah, it was a pretty good year for us. You know, the previous year we had a national champion and you know national semifinalist in men's lacrosse. So it's uh, it was tough athletically to compete with that. But I think I think we still had a pretty successful year all around. You know, Stony Brook women's lacrosse probably is our highlight in terms of being nationally ranked again, advancing through the NCAA tournament for you know more than just the first round. So I think we feel really good about the competitive piece of it from an athletic standpoint. Vermont represented the league really well in the NCAA tournament, as they always have, and you know that was probably the highlight from the previous year was UMBC beating Virginia. Then you know we'll probably us and. And UMBC and probably everyone in college basketball will remember that forever. Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, the last couple of years I think have been a really strong representation of the American East on the field. On the field, and then certainly off the field, there's lots of things going on as well. Yeah, with all of that sort of on-field, on-court success, I mean, what is that? How is that? What does that mean for the visibility of the conference and and getting more people that that don't know about the teams, about the schools, more involved there? Yeah, you know, it's really hard for a conference who's not. A, not in the Power Five to get the eyeballs and attention from national media or fans. And so when you have those signature wins, like a UMBC beating Virginia, those are just great opportunities, certainly for the student athletes okay. to revel in the success and take everything in. But you know the, the associated branding and exposure that the institution and then the, the conference gets, you just can't replace that. You can't plan for something like that, uh, which is something we talk about a lot in our league. You know, and so that's why we're so focused on trying to create our own content and do things in our region of the country that hopefully will spread nationally to grow the brand and exposure of the Americas. But yeah, anytime we can, you know, be, not have to remind people who we are and people are familiar with our schools or our student athletes or our coaches, I think, um, you know, that's, that's the goal of everyone, right? In terms of brand reach, brand exposure. So I think we're making great strides in that regard, but certainly the wins on the field, on the court, you can't substitute that, um, and so the success of our teams really helps with that. I'm sure that's like where the you know when you put the work in on on the ground in terms of the social and digital and the platforms and and having that all sort of infrastructure when you have that those signature wins that's when it, you can really take advantage of those sort of things. Yeah, that's what we've been talking about almost since I started as social. It's it's so funny. I've been here eight years, which on the one hand is a long time. On the other hand, is not very long at all. But the advances in technology and social and digital media, even in you know five five years, has been pretty astounding and will continue to grow uh, pretty rapidly. But we've talked about since we sort of adjusted the focus of our communications team to really be a content team is really that be ready for the big moment, be ready to capitalize on a UMBC beating Virginia, on having two lacrosse teams and men's and women's be ranked number one for almost the entire year so that when those moments happen, we're ready. We, we, we have everything lined up, we have the assets lined up, we have the inventory that we can promote our schools and student athletes. So we focus intentionally around building our content, our digital social media strategy to do the things every day so that yeah, when, when we have the big moments, uh, you know, we, we know what we're doing and not get caught, caught off guard with that. I know the conference has really been on the forefront of initiatives around diversity and inclusion and, and all these sort of topics. Get me up to speed a little bit in terms of some of the things that are going on right now, how, the, how Marky sort of views some of these really important sort of that topics. Yeah, the Diversity and Inclusion Initiative, which is now called Spread Respect, has been around for over six years. And so this is something I, I'm really proud of our league getting behind this so early. From, you know, it started in the LGBTQ plus space and, is the, and this year expanded through a partnership with RISE, the Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality, to you know, start focus on other areas of diversity and race issues, something that's so important to our student athletes. And that's really, as a conference, you know, trying to listen to our student athletes. It's, it's sometimes difficult. You've got different campuses with different interests, but there are certain, a lot of, certainly a lot of things that bind our league together and a commitment to diversity and inclusion is one of them. And so to be, I think, one of the few conferences that can you know, confidently say that we've been uh, dedicating resources and time and energy to this space to help our student athletes uh, for so many years is something we're really proud of. So the spread respect piece is just become ingrained in what we do. You know, no one questions it. We don't come to it every year and say, are we gonna do this again next year? It's more, what are we gonna do more next year? How can we continue to make it better and stronger? So that's something I'm, I'm absolutely really proud of. Um, with respect to our commitment to diversity and inclusion, both in action and in... So I know one of the areas that America East is focused on now as it relates to student-athletes is mental health and, and, and getting involved in that space there. I mean, 
What, what, what sort of caused you to go down that path? What, what did you see from some of the student athletes? Uh, and what are, what are some of the things that you guys are doing? It's really similar to what I just said. It's listening to our student athletes mm -hmm. and not just saying, okay, thanks, and checking it off the list, you know, doing one initiative and thinking that we're done with it, but really listening and recognizing that as a conference, we don't have the resources to provide the best education, but we can certainly pool our resources, work with people on campus, and try to uh, create a better environment for, for mental health, both in terms of whether it's you know, serious clinical resources that have to go in and helping our, our institutions understand the structures that might be uh, best equipped to help the student athletes, mm -hmm. but in the broader campaign of just creating mental health, you know, promoting mental health awareness. And so, you know, this year we launched our Better Together campaign, which is a, our latest iteration of uh, our more public facing uh, campaign around mental health awareness. And I think that's the one that will stick now, similar to how Spread Respect has grown, we anticipate better together growing in the same way and becoming sort of ubiquitous ac across the league and hopefully beyond the league around our commitment to mental health awareness. But it comes back to listening to your student athletes and, mm -hmm. and building upon things like, like you said and not just doing it as a one-off piece of it. Do you hope that more conferences kind of follow your lead on this front? I mean, it seems like this is an initiative that student athletes would really gain something out of. Yeah, I do. And, and certainly there are other leagues that are starting to do more things in this space. Some are doing more than us, but I think we're right there in that, in that lead pack, if you will, in terms of how we have embraced the issue and not run away from it. It's, it's easy on so many things to say, oh, we don't have the resources to do this. Um, you know, we don't have the people or it's going to cost this, more, this much money to do the X or Y. And, you know, that in some areas you might need to wait to have the right amount of resources. This is one area that I just don't think you can wait. You've, you've got to start somewhere. Um, and yeah, it's not going to be uh, perfect. You might not be able to jump from zero to five uh, full-time professionals dedicated to this, but maybe start with a part-time person, maybe just one person. Uh, maybe identify someone across campus that might be able to help support you in athletics. And even just talking about it, you know, it doesn't cost a lot to do uh, a social media campaign around it so that your student athletes know and see the visibility of your support. And so those are the things that we've just not run away from or, or held back from. Let's figure out what we can do with our resources and try to move the needle, just start moving the needle a little bit. Um, and so that's, that's something I think it, that we're, we're, I'm proud of, that our league, like I said, has embraced it and not been afraid to do something, even if we know there's still a long ways to go.